Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another Storax a Kickstarter NAS update today is the 24th of August and we're going to be going through everything we've learned in the last oh give or take about 24 days or so but straight away off the bat there are going to be some of you watching this video because you may have heard on the official Kickstarter campaign from Storax and on some of my social posts that we will be receiving a pre-release unit here on the channel we're going to be conducting a bunch of tests and looking at the device in a lot of detail so if you You've come to this video for that look on the time bar and go to the end of the video where we're going to a lot more detail about that but for now let's go through the update of the campaign thus far as i say in the last 24 25 days or so and again the big topic consistently throughout all of this and again we cover this a lot more in our more recent updates here on the article link below it is of course to do with the sd cards as we go through this then i think it would be safe to say that the shipping test that storaxa was conducting with the sd cards has gone far from smoothly for a lot of users a lot of users have received their sd cards and again as we mentioned in our july update video SD cards are not the be all end all. It's like a couple of quid's worth of SD card there, but it was about it being a shipping test for a number of us that left a lot of user concern. To put it into perspective, again, Kickstarter, as we've talked about many, many times, is not great for when you've got long running conversations because it only loads so many chats in a, in a, a time. But when we look at looking at 225 comments, we can see that the term SD card has arisen 179 times. And trust me, although a lot of them are people. People saying that they've received their SD card, the more recent ones, and definitely certain regions we're seeing it more and more. Lots of users saying they haven't received them. Now, if you watch my other video, I did highlight that mine haven't quite arrived yet. I did have tracking information that I got as a receiver, although the sender didn't look like they got it. But I can state that I did get an SD card there coming through. Ignore that uh, there in the background. That's for a video I'm working on again long followers of the channel and again those looking in the inner circle you'll know exactly why i'm looking at that board there in the background but the sd card arrived it was branded it arrived with a little message there and again it's a standard card now uh, did you know arrived empty it wasn't like pre format with any system image but they did state clearly that they largely removed that as an option that they were working on at that time um but I don't think, uh, I think uh, we saw in a more recent update from them when they were talking about the results of that shipping test that again, they're not overly chuffed with the way that rolled out and they did state that chances are they're going to go with a new logistics partner for those. Again, not to everyone's liking, I've got to say that even the most recent comment on there, some people complaining about, you know, just sort out a company. This, you're not buying from Best Buy, this is still your crowdfunded website here so again there's going to be bumps i was never a big fan of the way the shipping test had gone out as you saw from my other video but still nonetheless i think right now i think we can all agree it has not been the smoothest process it comes down to them eventually saying that the sd cards after the usa canada germany united kingdom which let's face it great for if you live in those regions um if you uh, were not in those regions it seemed that they stopped shipping the cards again this is the logistics company that's pretty bad you know so what they're stating is the sd cards will still be shipped out to backers who haven't received them yet and again tracking information wasn't really usable and then did recover existing sd cards but still nonetheless that still left a bit of a question mark for a lot of users out there that are still either waiting on these cards and indeed how it reflects upon the delivery of the final product at fulfillment next up in that august early update was information on the amd configuration now i know there are a lot of users out there that are wondering what is going on with the intel configs not just your powerful you know your i7 uh, gen systems right the way down to those that ordered the base level pentium like myself you know in order just to keep track of all of this what's happening with those buyers and unfortunately with those configurations we don't have much more information on those and this amd uh, unit seems to be the first one that's rolling out out in at least in terms of production at the uh, manufacturing side on theirs while they perform their tests and tweaks according to Storaxa there now again they showed information on the BIOS not only a screenshot there but in a later update uh, just going through all the options and configuration details of that BIOS they noticed a few things they stated that did need to be rectified and on top of that they did show some of the performance and configuration layouts there with regards to 10 GBE texting, um, uh, testing RAID Z performance within TrueNAS and some Plex testing there that didn't really push it 
too hard, but still was indicative of what uh, the system might be able to do. But again, we are still looking at pre-production. We aren't looking at a completed device here. So you have to take all of these things with that pinch of salt overall. But the next thing was the case. Something that I and many have been rattling on about for a while it's been really weird that we've not seen much of the case up until now, you know, to early to mid August. We saw lots of stuff right at the beginning of the campaign with them showing it off uh, in early uh, images there with regards to the layout of it. But again, we're talking about a device going into mass production. And a lot of the time, what we were told over and over again was that because they were looking for a single case configuration for all of the different CPU and chipsets, the result was they wanted to get all of those nailed down before they got the case. Again, it still feels like they're doing this in line predominantly with the AMD to start with. So kind of how that all fits in, I'm not sure. But the first images we saw were pretty basic, if I'm honest. These are the ones that arrived on August 15th. And these arrived with the case configuration there with a the kind of tape and shrink wrap. You know, I know this is an in-progress um, device. Remove the plastic. It would have added 10 minutes tops to your production update there. Having them all on there kind of... It raised concerns. Another thing that raised concerns, it has to be said when we look closer at the images, is the discoloration between the panels, which have got the OS drive and those M2 NVMEs uh, for this kickstarted NAS. And just the slight change in possibly material or just tone, it wasn't entirely clear. But later on, we saw further updates of the casing in an update that arrived later on. And this was the update that arrived on the 23rd. Uh, that was yesterday morning, UK time. And this arrived with a de detailed on the base level panel there that's got access to the MOBO, where you're going to be using, you know, for changing the M2 drive there, as well as the uh, SODIM upgrade slots there, DDR4, DDR5, uh, respectively. And... Again, there were some question marks about this is clearly one of the upgraded cases there. This is the one for that four port uh, AMD with the two, um, I think 2.5 gig ports and the two 10G ports there. I don't think they're one gig. And again, we still saw, still saw that discoloration there, but they did highlight that other users, you know, mentioning this, they did go back to production to raise this concern and the producers do, uh, the production line of this case was stating that they would get that resolved. But if you are watching this store actor when it comes to those top panels and again we are still talking about something that still hasn't reached fulfillment we're still seemingly looking at the same config i want to see the spacing of those bays because right now what we're seeing is we've got that base level bay there as you can see which has got that main controller board and clearly there's going to be some kind of sister board where those m.2s and the main top accessible panel are going to be based What's going to be the height there? Because we're looking at this main bay here, which is going to have our, our main uh, um, SATA storage base going into them there. They've got those click and load. But I want to know the spacing, because notwithstanding that top panel, let's go to a better image there, notwithstanding that top panel there being at the top and you're going to be utilising an element of dissipation, but I want to know the spacing between the M2 bays and that top case in there, because you want to know basically the height of the heat sinks you might be utilising, which again, for those using the more throttled uh, systems there, like that Pentium entry level model, you know, they're going to be restricted to three times one from what I understand. So you're not going to have to worry too much about dissipation. But what about those looking at some of the Intel core higher end and the AMD Ryzen buyers? Those are ones that are going to be Gen 4. And I'm not too sure about the speed uh, limitations on those at this time. So heat dissipation is going to be key and the size of the heat sinks I can use. And indeed, how these are going to connect to those top panels, is it going to be a nice chunky panel that's going to have a nice wadge of thermal there between the SSDs, or is there going to be room for an additional heatsink on there? I'm not too sure at this time, and it doesn't seem to be hugely clear given the different configurations that we're talking about here. Which brings us to the subject of evaluating a pre-release device. Now, we were reached out to by Storax. I say we, me and Eddie, we were reached out to on the 1st of August regarding whether we would be interested in reviewing this device. Now, I'm not going to take it lightly. We've really got to be as transparent as possible because unlike when I review a lot of the products here, these are products that have rolled out for retail. They are the final established product. Now, this is a crowdfunded NAS and what we are going to be at least evaluating, I'm going to really try my best not to use the word review throughout, it's going to be a device that hasn't crossed that finish line yet and therefore we have to evaluate it 
in that fashion with those correct caveats. Now, again, when they got in contact on the 1st of August, um, it's a long old conversation. You can look through it if you like. Again, I'm going to leave that there on screen. I'm sure some of you might screenshot and read through it. But ultimately, it's me stating that I'm more than happy to do this as long as it is understood that this is going to be reviewing a product that is in development, a, evaluating a pre production release a preview if you will and i have asked them to stipulate just what status the device is going to be in when it is rolled out to me with documentation to that fact indeed when it was um, shown online uh, again on their own pages there when they're talking about amd units and uh, when i talked about some of my social posts there the main reason i did it is I could run a hundred tests on this. I could be doing 10G benchmarks. I could do the internal stuff, whether I'm going to be, you know, seeing how well Proxmox knits those different OSs that are going to be living on top of it, on top of it, and looking at the temperature of the system as a whole, noise. I could be doing any number of tests. I could do a hundred tests. However, I'm always going to miss some. So in order to do this the best way I can, this is where you're going to have to come in here, whether you are a backer or not. I've already asked people to tell me the tests they want to see in these videos. Now, what I'd like you to do is in the comments of this video or in the comments of the article that I'm updating constantly, let me know the tests you want to see. Not only do I, you know, when we're talking about benchmarks, because again, I'm already going down to the media are going to be utilized more on that in a moment. But on top of that, when I'm running these tests, what form do you want these to take? Because one, I could do one massive hour and a half, two hour video of all of the tests, all of it being timestamped. The issue is going to be that that video in production is going to take one to two weeks minimum there's just me and eddie here and i largely do all of the youtube stuff so consequently if you want that that's going to take a long time or i drop lots of videos as and when so as soon as tests are completed i put out mini videos again that's going to take up a lot of the channel's time and all that may help some of you guys that are following this project it's not really fair on the other users that come to this channel for other things so finding a balance between how all of these tests are going to be published is a battle in itself and i'd be really interested to hear what you guys think in the comment for that now when it comes to the storage media i am going to be receiving that amd unit that we've talked about thus far um securing media is always tricky when it comes to these tests a number of you've always talked in the past about when we test a lot of the NASs or when we show these NASs regarding the you know how we test them in the configuration and ultimately we are a small channel there is just two of us here. I don't have racks of storage media. And a lot of the time, when you see the NASs on the table on my videos, these are NASs that are populated with media with tests in progress. I only have a finite amount of storage media and freeing up four to five M2 NVMEs in Gen 3 or Gen 4 for these systems alongside a rack of storage drives is a lot more um uh you know to ask then you might think because it means all of those are coming out of my test regiment so i'm put, um, contacting a couple of brands that i know and a few reps to see if i can get some loaned media sent over to me to make sure i have the best storage media i can for these tests but at the moment as it stands and again we are talking weeks away from production i'm going to be utilizing uh, some team group uh, 1TB Gen 3 SSDs, I know they're not Gen 4, and I've got a bank of these that were already going to be utilized for some in-progress Asus store flash door testing uh, right now, and I'm going to be utilizing 10TB WD Ultrastar drives in this system, fully populated there. So fingers crossed, um, I will be able to secure some other media for the testing, but Otherwise, that's pretty much what you're going to be seeing in those banks of tests. With 10 GBE testing, I'll probably be taking advantage of Thunderbolt 10 GBE adapters for this system, but hold out for greater than that, hopefully. But again, for these tests, I'm going to need you guys to tell me what you actually want. Because unlike a lot of the reviews that I do here on the channel, a lot of the time you come to these videos because you're on the fence about a storage solution or you don't quite know what you need and then I'll make a video about different things and then you go that's for me or that's not. This is different because a lot of you watching this are already in the hole for a, as little as 300 nicker to thousands of pounds. This is going to be very much the other way around so I need to know what you want to see. Do you want to see 
a completely separate initial video where I go through the hardware architecture of it, close looks at the chassis design and stuff like that, and then separate videos for the benchmark testing, separate video for the noise, separate video for the temperature, or one massive video which will take longer. Let me know what you think in the comments. But right now, it's been a very light month in terms of general updates um, in August on the Storaxa uh, project. I will say, where is the Intel information there? A lot of Intel users that have gone classic Intel or the base level product, they're kind of missing out on a lot of these updates. And when it comes to the SD cards, I think that for such a small thing is going to be really rattling a lot of people's cages. So if you are someone that hasn't received your SD card, let me know what the communication between you and Storax has been like. But apart from that, do engage in those comments below or in the article to let me know what you want to see from this. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.